WTF is EQ. What is EQ all about? How do you use it in GarageBand or in whatever DAW you're using? Well, here's the simple part. EQ is a volume control for your frequencies. And I know when I say that, some people say that's too oversimplifying, but it really is. Some EQs will add some color. So if you're using like a vintage EQ or you're using an EQ that's like part of a plugin or part of a pack, it might change the sound a bit. A pure EQ, all it's really doing, a parametric EQ, it's just turning up or down the sound at different frequencies. So let's take it back to the start. We'll, we'll grab my vocal here to start with. Let's solo this down because vocal is a very dynamic instrument. So this is a, a vocal for this hip-hop track that I've got called Imagination. And uh, if everything's working, we should be able to hit play. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under... So there is my track. That, that's my sound. We've got a couple of ways that we can EQ this. The very simplest way is, and a lot of um, like GarageBand Mac and GarageBand iOS have smart controls and they have this very simple control. So if you hit on this button here, you've got treble and you've got bass. And in its simplest form, that's the way we look at it. We're like, do we want more or less treble or high end? Do we want more or less bass or low end? So if I'm looking at this vocal and I'm like, I'm sounding too thin, we need some more bass, we need some more high end. If we hit play, we can drag this one up and it's gonna add some bass. All the complications of my life, all the times when I couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid, always worried about- Now, is that sounding good? Absolutely not, because what that's bringing out is all those sort of, all those sort of spitting and, and breathing noises that are in there. So we wouldn't put that on this particular vocal, it's making it sound terrible. We can do the same with the treble. What if we like, oh, we don't have enough high end in this, we can play. About the things I never up. did, always thinking about the next big problem, even when it's someone else that's on the hook me in. Now, do we need either of those things in this? Not really. But what you could do, because see when we turn that bass up, it actually sounded worse. You could actually do what's called a subtractive EQ and a lot of the time people think about what you got to turn up but really you should also be looking at what you want to turn down and removing some of those frequencies so if I listened to this vocal and I went there's actually too much bass in here I can hear some of those bassy tones that are going to conflict with things like bass guitars and kick drums I can actually drag that down so if we hit the play button always worry about the things I never did always think about the next big problem even when it's someone else that's on the hook me in that's actually pretty good now, another thing that I'll mention here is EQing something by itself is often not the best idea either because frequencies and your EQ, the different frequencies, the highs and the mids and the lows, you really need to be comparing them with your other tracks while you're moving your EQ around because what I see a lot of folks doing when they're starting out is that they'll EQ their vocal or they'll EQ their guitar or they'll EQ their drums and then they'll bring it back into the mix and it'll get completely lost because they've EQ'd out the frequencies that they really needed to come through, or they've added frequencies that are already overly abundant within the track or within the project. So be very, very careful with that when you are EQing. So that's the basic level of EQing. You can then take it up a couple of notches, which is to actually go in and play around with some parametric EQing. Now here in GarageBand, that is here under your plugins and EQ and under the visual EQ here. So if we tap on this visual EQ, you can see that that EQ move that we made there has already done this little duck dive down here. So reducing from everything from the 200 Hertz down, that's been reduced here in our EQ. So we can now come and play with this, but now not only can we turn things up and down, we can decide what frequency we want to go up and down. So if you go over to the left, you can actually go, oh, I only want everything below 50 hertz to be turned down. So we can do that. Or you can go right up to here. And this is where you can start using EQ less as a, a, a thing to fix your mix or to, to improve your sound and more as an actual effect. So if you've ever wanted that real kind of telephone AM radio kind of effect, you can actually sweep your EQ, your bass here, and remove a lot of the bass from the track and you get a sound like this. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when... So you can actually adjust that. And again, because you've got the ability to choose your frequency, I've sort of turned down around that one hertz because you probably noticed I've got a bit of a nasally voice sometimes. So and what, what you can do is to identify the frequencies you may want to turn down is to actually turn them up first and then turn them down. And there's a, a technique called sweeping in EQ that you can actually use to find these. So let's uh, play this and we'll turn this up. We'll find a frequency that maybe we don't like and then we'll reduce it. As when I couldn't reach a knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid. Always worry about the things I never did. 
Yeah, I think it's around about there, around about that one one point five to two thousand hertz. That's where I sort of don't like that tone. So if we play this again and we turn it down, I can actually remove some of that nasally tone. Always think about the next big problem, even when it's someone else that's on the hook me in. Now the top end here, this is where you can add a little bit of sparkle. This is where you know people say that sheen or that sparkle you might want to add to the sound, and we can do that by increasing at the top end here. So if we hit play on this and we just drop drive this up like right up the top here and these aren't like there's no none of my vocals are at five kilohertz but this is just sort of that that high end air almost that inaudible unfathomable bit that you're going to actually improve so let's just take a listen to this in line and sinker ever wonder what it's like to be an overthinker tinker with all my little thoughts maybe it was just the way that I now i turned it up there to the extreme just so that you can kind of hear the difference there so that is the basics of eq most of your eqs if you just double tap everything goes back to flat and you can start from scratch so that's the simple and the intermediate version of eq the third layer here is actually using an EQ plugin. So if you've got yourself an EQ AUV3 plugin, you can actually add that here. So if we tap on the plugins and EQ here, I've actually got a whole bunch of things already in here, but actually I do have a slot there. So what we can do is we can hit the plus button there, go to audio unit extensions. Now there's a bunch of different EQ plugins that you can get. The ones that I recommend are free and they are LRC5 or LRC7. Now when you're starting out, I would go LRC5 because it's only five band, but LRC7 actually has even more bands. And when we're talking bands, we're just talking about abilities to turn up or down a particular frequency. So let's load up LRC7 just so we've got the additional frequencies here. If we tap on this one, we've now got a very similar layout here to what we had before but instead of just having those uh, three we can double tap these and you can actually add in as many of these as we like and we can start moving our sounds around and start changing things up here by adjusting our EQ curve so this works exactly the same way as the visual EQ we were just talking about but you've got a lot more control and the cool thing with this one is you can actually if we tap on these if you, you can't actually see it but if you use two fingers you can actually change how thin or how wide those are what we call the Q setting so if you just want to do like a subtle change you can make it sort of thinner and narrower or if you want it to be really big you can do that and as I said LRC5 is the other version these are both free uh, and they're both from uh, Neon Silicon who are a developer who create cool little EQ plugins so you can try LRC7 or the OG and to be honest I actually use LRC5 perhaps a little bit more uh, now I can't find it there it is LRC5 I use LRC5 a little bit more because I just find that it's a much simpler and cleaner interface here all these are already on and you just tap them and drag them and move them around so that's another way that you can actually adjust your EQ here in garage band so you've got your simple you got your treble and your bass your very basic EQ you can then go into your visual EQ to tweak your EQ there on a three band and then if you want a five or a seven band EQ or any other sort of EQ because again you don't have to just use LRC five or seven there's a heap of others that you can add in here here and you could even use something uh, like a uh, mix box there you go you can use something like mix box which actually has built-in EQs in here so you can actually use something like this that has a whole bunch of different EQs and these are ones so you could use something like this like this uh, vintage EQ 1a and this again has your different EQ levels that you can change but this is actually adding something so this is actually going to color your sound a little bit more than actually just a standard EQ so there you are Options galore for EQ and in Garage Band iOS.